This is Kathy McBreen, Managing Director of Spectrum Group. We are delighted today to be able to interview Bill Muller, one of the premier communications consultants in the Chicago area. Bill has been a local broadcaster for many years, has won many awards in his career, and we're really delighted to have the time to talk to him today. What do you recommend advisors do in the future when we start to when they have to start to deal with the children of their existing clients? How are they going to make that connection with this generation that's just into Snapchat and Instagram? Uh, yeah, and yeah, that's true. That's that is changing uh, a lot. Uh, I think uh, I train sometimes kids coming out of college and into the real world from the, not the artificial world, but the false world of tweeting, emailing, texting, etc., where they're going to be in a position, they're going to have to be more articulate. They're going to have to have some developed yeah. interpersonal skills. Otherwise, they're going to fall flat. Uh, this generation, it's not the me, it's the whatever, but they're all sort of self-indulgent. It's like the world owes me something. Yeah. It's not that. You've got to really polish, practice the kinds of skills that people will respond favorably to you in this kind of a face-to-face -face situation. So I would ask uh, the client with whom you already have the relationship, the parent, and talk about that. Start adding the children into the conversation early. Maybe make some suggestions that they talk to the, to the kids. And the, the, the financial advisor should suggest some things to bring up that are youth-friendly, say, and not boring. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck. The, the most compelling thing, I think, is to talk about compound interest. And the earlier you get involved with it, right. the better you're going to be and have some stats to back that up. Yeah. So junior at age 22, if you start saving a mere $5 a week starting now, instead of waiting till you're 40 and save $40 a week, you will be X universes ahead by starting with a small increment earlier on. And something like that that has high impact. That should get their attention. Talk about the kinds of responsibilities that you will have with your kids one day soon. It might just be a handful of years away. So engage them through the parents, first of all, uh, to start the wheels turning so that they can start, so that they're more predisposed to responding favorably when you call them up and say, I'd like you to come in. So how would you address, if say, let's say you're an advisor that's kind of been quiet in the past or sort of introverted and you're not the greatest communicator. How do you take some of the tips that you're giving them and start to change the yeah, paradigm. Yeah, I'd say do it in uh, lower threat environments, and so that is uh, with your immediate family. Practice some of these skills with them. Then with uh, the second ring of acquaintances, people in your church, synagogue, mosque, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, others you're semi-comfortable with, and then the hardest will be the outer ring, which are uh, cold calls, new clients, uh, and maybe existing clients if you've really got a problem with the communication. And wade into it. Don't just think you're going to turn on a dime and suddenly be this charismatic guy who's <laughs> going to start speaking to people. And I'm, what I ought to say about that is I'm not saying you're supposed to be like me. I might be, in fact, way over the top if a financial advisor talked like me. But come toward me to some degree so that you're at least leaving the place where you are and rewiring your thinking so that your default, that is your natural way of expressing yourself, is going to, it changes over time. Mm -hmm. Now you have to have desire, you have to buy into all this that I'm talking about, because it is kind of a long row, it doesn't come in an instant, and it does take practice, and you've got to remember to keep making these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of other uh, exercises, uh, stretching your range uh, by exaggerating so that when you snap back to your default way of speaking, just the barriers enough. won't be as rigid. You'll be able to move out of, uh -huh. the, of that narrow range a little bit more easily. But if you, if you do it over time, I guarantee you will change, and you will change for the better. But you need the desire, and you need to make the commitment of time to it. When you think that you've been in a situation where you may have communicated poorly with somebody, how would you recommend that they fix that? Well, it depends, I guess, on what was poor. Was the information poor that you gave? Was it really so bad? Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of how you came across to the other person that you really feel you need to do something proactively, I would say rather than draw attention to it, because I would guess that it's not perceived as a mistake or an error or something negative or bad on the part of the, uh, of the, other, of the uh, customer, the client, mm -hmm. uh, and, and just change going forward. Just make okay. some adjustments and, and slowly evolve into a more expressive, confident, Mm -hmm. uh, co communicator. I, I, you know, the thing is, I always tell people uh, when I'm training them for speaking on camera or on a microphone is never draw attention to a mistake. Half the audience won't even know you made a mistake. 
the other half will not care because you're already moving on to something else that's interesting and important that they're going to be focused on. So don't do anything really to draw attention to something that you perceive as a mistake. We all do make mistakes, and there's nothing criminal about that. It's the, the people who go, oh, I'm sorry, um, I always do this. What I meant to say, you know, that's it's like, spotlight, blaring horns, I just made a mistake. But if you just bulldoze forward, it, they're not going to care. So when do you think it's okay to or how do you use things like emails or social media to sort of complement your communication strategy? Yeah, you have different layers of communication. You, you want them to be up to date on maybe things that are not mundane but of lesser importance and maybe those come by email. Okay. Uh, or if the person is a t savvy t t tweeter type, does the Facebook thing, you can ask them and, and they'll maybe uh, when it's get to know the client, there's a form that you hand out and you ask them that specific question. Well, whatever their form is, I would say uh, email is usually common and, and, and as you know, we don't really read uh, form letters all that thoroughly. So yeah. if you can actually write, type out, obviously you would need a, a manageable client base for this or you have secretarial staff support that could help you. But be specific. Mm -hmm. That is, in the subject line, don't say third quarter report Spectrum Group or third quarter report Jer Boy, Jer we've done that. Jerry's Financial <laughs> Service. No one's going to pay attention to that. Just say, uh, Jerry, you just made $50,000 last year. There's something to get, grab attention. Get them to open that up and then say, hey, Jerry, by the way, I hope you're, I, I, I was seeing the weather was terrible uh, down there in Aruba where you went last week. I'm so sorry to hear it. I bet you didn't get a 10. Mm -hmm. You know, just something lighthearted and easy breezy to show that you're paying attention, that you recognize that person isn't just a file in the cabinet, but a living, breathing individual that you recognize as being, yeah, a client, but a, but a friend in a way. Yeah. So be specific. Like, so an email shouldn't just be pro forma, uh, dry data and form letter sounding. They've got to really be specific to the individual you're sending it to. Same thing with Twitter. If they do the Twitter thing, that's a real opportunity. Find out about What's important to them? When I interview executives, I go into their office and I'll see, oh, there's the golf trophy, some golf pictures, a lot of family stuff. He's got uh, U.S. Navy uh, awards. Okay, I now know a lot about this yeah. person. So what I do is I go home and I start looking for uh, golf things. Maybe uh, I'll w force myself, to, I hate sports, uh, to watch <laughs> a, an important golf tournament. But just something that's important. If they like to ski in the Alps and you hear about a package airline deal to the Alps, I say, hey, just thought you'd be interested in this. Those little telling things are so important. You're not saying, and remember who your favorite financial advisor is, but you're saying that without having to say that, yeah. in effect, because you're showing you care. You're paying attention. You see them as an individual. You want a relationship with them. So it's more than just the professional, I'm your financial advisor, you are my client, and that's all we talk about when we're together is financial stuff. Yeah. Expand that into other areas that you know are important to the client. Mm -hmm. They will value you so much more for that. Well, Thank you so much for coming, and we will probably get back to you in the future for more ideas and tips about how to communicate more effectively. All right, Kathy, thanks so much. Thanks.